good to see you. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite topics and you're gonna get incredible value out of this conversation. I hope you really love it. I also have one of my favorite friends and colleagues who's gonna be joining the conversation. Her name is Dr. Sue Kachera and she's amazing. And we're gonna be talking about a topic that is so near and dear to my heart. It has changed my life. It is the tool that actually transformed my anxiety. It is the number one most powerful solution that I have ever seen, and it's called homeopathy. And I'm really excited about it because not a lot of people talk about homeopathy. It's really misunderstood, and when used correctly, it's game-changing. It's life-changing. And so I'm going to show you what homeopathic remedy looks like. And so here is a bottle of a homeopathic remedy. And so homeopathic remedies are safe. They're natural. They're regulated by the FDA. You can buy them at health food stores. And they are without side effects. They don't interact with medications. And they're really so we're going to be talking all about that today. We're going to talk about how you can use homeopathy to help anxiety, which is what I did in my story. And we're going to talk about how homeopathy can be used for kids and adults. We'll talk a little bit about some cases of homeopathy. And we're going to be talking about how you can start building your own homeopathic remedy first aid kit. And so... It's gonna be really good. And I wanna kind of start while we're waiting for Sue to get on here, is I wanna start and talk about how homeopathy started. And so let's go back in history. And I think that oftentimes understanding the history of something will help us understand how to use it and where it came from. And so I think that Sue, is just trying to get on. I think that there's like technology snafus on her end. And so she'll be in here any minute. I just messaged with her. And so while we're waiting for Dr. Sue, we're going to talk about the history and then we're going to talk about how you can use homeopathy cases, all sorts of stuff. So go back to the 1800s and we're in Germany. And at this time, there's a malaria outbreak. And so this whole area has a malaria outbreak and malaria was really bad. It took lots of lives. And the problem was with the treatment, oftentimes the treatment was offered. Uh, we just got Sue in here. And so you'll see her popping up in just a minute. There's Hi. my girl. How are you? I'm yeah. I'm so good. I was just telling everybody the history of homeopathy while we got technology figured out. I know. I, I was waiting for you to request me. I was like, oh my God, wait, I'm supposed to jump on there. No, I'm happy I'm here. Keep, I'm keep so up. happy you're here. You guys, you. Sue and I go way back. We have been friends for many, many years. Uh, you're you're one of my soul sisters, my vitalists, my my favorite people. And so that's why I asked you to jump on this live. I just wanted to like chat with people about homeopathy and how great it is. Love it. I love it. And Dr. Kane, I, you know, she still tells me to call her Nicole, but she was my teacher in SBNM when I was in naturopathic medical school and I would request all of her shifts and I was obsessed with everything that she was teaching because she was a real deal vitalist and I was soaking it up from her. <laughs> and I learned so much from her and I learned so much homeopathy from her. So I'm so happy to be on here discussing this today. This is going to be so fun. And by the way, if as you guys are watching this, if you're listening to the recording or if you're watching it live, we're recording it live. Let's see. It's January 5th, 2022 that we're recording it. And so if you have questions, I love and Sue loves. She's really active on her social media. I try to answer every question we get. So if you have questions, then leave a comment. If we don't get to it during the live, then when the video gets posted, the comments don't get transferred over. So just like rewrite your question and we'll make sure that we answer it. And so uh, I wanted to start by kind of going into the history of homeopathy. And we had just dived into a malaria outbreak in the 1800s. So are you guys ready for, ready for the story? Sue, yeah. Sue, Dr. Sue, you've heard me tell the story so many times. <laughs> so, 
Okay, so malaria outbreak, and then there's this doctor, and he was an MD, and his name was Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. And he was observing the primary treatment of malaria at that time, which is they took something called Peruvian bark, and they got it from Peru, it's the bark of a plant, and they put it on a ship, and they brought it all the way across the sea, and they were treating people with this Peruvian bark, or the other name is cinchona. And the problem was, is that they were doing such high doses of Peruvian bark that if it didn't kill the patient, they would get better. But Hahnemann is looking at this and he's like, this is crazy. I don't want that statistical chance of killing somebody. What would happen if I just gave them a little less? So he did. And it worked. And so then he's like, this is super cool. I'm just going to dilute it some more. And so he gave them less and people are continuing to get better. So Hahnemann is like, why is this working? There must be something to, to this dilution process. And so he's thinking about it and he studied biochemistry and edited journals and he's really a researcher at heart, very analytical. And so he's kind of pondering this. And meanwhile, he's treating malaria left and right. And he has all of his little diluted cinchona Peruvian barks in the back of his buggy. And he's taking them to the patients. And so they're jostling around in the back of the buggy. And interestingly, Hahnemann observed that the buggy delivered remedies got way better results than when people came to his office. And, he's, he, and Hahnemann's like, mind is blown. And he's like, there's got to be something to this jostling business. And so he started to dilute. And then the process is called succussion. So you take a substance, the Peruvian bark in this case, he diluted it, and then he would shake it and whack it against a big book. And so, you know, if we have the remedy here, he would put the substance in there, he would dilute it, dilute it, dilute it, shake it, succuss it, whack it against a great big book, and then give those remedies to patients. And they got better. And so this is the first homeopathic dilution. And so now the way that homeopathy is made is it's very regulated by the FDA, it's standardized, and homeopathic remedies can be made out of any natural substance that we have, in addition to Peruvian bark. And what's really paradoxical and interesting about it is that the remedies have been diluted to non-material numbers. They've been diluted beyond what's called Avogadro's number. And so there's technically nothing in it. And so for a long, long time, people were like, well, how can nothing do something? And it's because we mm -hmm. didn't have the right technology to assess what was actually there. And then we started to study quantum physics and we started to look at nanoparticles. And what we're finding is that homeopathic remedies contain information on a nanoparticle level and it gives that information to the body. And if it's prescribed correctly, it could be life-changing. And so that is the history of homeopathy. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good job. I know, Thank I you. hear all these stories from, from you and all the other doctors, and it, it, but it really helps understand because people don't understand how can, like you said, something that's so minute cause such a big difference, right? Like diluting it makes it more potent and people like, Right. Every yeah, how, a little bit. <laughs> how can something that's nothing do something that's more powerful than something exactly. that's something do? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And we have, we've had some questions that I've seen come through and yeah. some of the questions are, can homeopathy help with this or can homeopathy help with that? And the answer is yes. And, right. and so we'll talk about that more, but I'm super curious, Dr. Sue, mm -hmm. what, with homeopathy, was there an experience or a case or a moment where you were like, this is actually something that I want to pay attention to? Well, being on, I, I would say being on the shifts that I chose uh, and seeing patients actually get better from a little sugar pellet, it was fascinating to me. How could this little pellet change their world or change their life? And one thing that and I know that you and I agree on this. One thing that I didn't agree with when I was on shifts was there were some homeopathic doctors that would only give that remedy because they didn't want anything else to, you know, um, like they didn't want to use it synergistically with other vitamins and herbs. And what happens if you got the wrong remedy, right? So the worst thing that can happen if you choose, if your practitioner chooses the wrong remedy is nothing, right? It's just not going to give you effect. So if there was 
a practitioner, you know, maybe didn't find the right remedy, why would we not use other modalities with it? And I really like that you were okay with, you know, of course, they need some vitamins and minerals, they're deficient. And you always talked about you have to give the body what it needs, right? So if someone's deficient in vitamin D, and you give them a homeopathic remedy, yeah, it might help with some of their symptoms, but they also need the nutrients. So I kind of picked up on, you know, different teachings of homeopathy in terms of how some people would only give a remedy versus use it synergistically. And that's how I've seen it work the best. And then just in, in classes, learning about each remedy, I would kind of make like a person for each remedy. Like, oh, this looks like a, like a podium person. And it was almost fascinating to create a character. And so it was that creative, like, character making of each remedy that kind of really drew me in and then I was remembering little minutia about remedies that I would never think I would remember because I kind of placed it in a character um, if that makes sense but seeing many people I remember when I was on a shift of yours and we were doing I think I gave someone aconite because they were I mean they thought they were going to die they were severely anxious and the next time we saw them they have, they're literally, their whole demeanor changed. And that's when I was like, okay, this, I have to learn more about this. This is really, really fascinating. I remember that case. That was intense anxiety. And a lot of the people oh. that I work with are so severely anxious. And I remember that you came in and you were talking about like, she's really anxious. She's really struggling. And she was looking for something that was safe that she could take because right. part of her anxiety. Exactly. And I think you found aconite. You picked aconite at that time, and she got so much better. Anxiety got better. Right? And then when you add the mind-body therapies, right, we were doing EFT, and we were doing all of these things with it, I felt like finally we were able to get her to the point where she saw that she didn't need a psychiatric med, right? And we also saw patients with psychiatric meds, which you work, you know, you work with all the time, that that helps them taper that helps them not need as much right that helps them basically just feel more grounded to be able to come off or you know some of the psychiatric meds they still can have psychiatric symptoms and so when we are adding a remedy it's we're able to again not make them have to go up in dosage or actually take away some of the symptoms that the psychiatric drug is not even helping with yes absolutely and i want to emphasize too that these remedies can be used with medications because a lot of people will ask like, oh my gosh, well, I'm on this medication. I need to be on it. I can't quit a cold turkey. And oftentimes supplements and vitamins may interact or cause serotonin syndrome is a common thing we have to look for. And homeopathy is really safe uh, because it's a material. It's really safe. And so I love, like you're saying, to use it as a part of program to help with side effects, to help with tapering. So I think that's a really, really good point. Absolutely. And so you have this case, you had this really powerful case of this person who got better with her anxiety and then that created the space for her to do that deeper inner work because her nervous system wasn't in fight, flight, freeze anymore. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And she felt, she just felt more grounded and she felt that she had the ability to overcome versus, you know, just like I said, it's like people on acid reflux meds, right? They're on it and they're still having acid reflux, right? It's like the same thing with psychiatric drugs. They might take the edge off, but these people are still feeling the symptoms. So this is why it's perfect because, and that's another reason I love homeopathy, is not only it's super safe for babies and, you know, geriatric population, infants, and everyone in between, but you, you also don't have that interaction with medications. So you can literally take it with any, you know, people ask all the time. It's one of those modalities that if I'm worried about something interacting or being too young, too old, you know, in terms of age, it's always homeopathy because at least I can sleep well at night knowing I didn't do something to kind of upheave something that I wasn't supposed to or interact with something I wasn't supposed to. So you use homeopathy in your current practice, and I'm kind of wondering if you have any favorite remedies that you're like, you know, like you said, aconite. Like aconite is a great remedy to think about if you're feeling really anxious, um, especially that case that you described. Aconite yeah. is a great remedy if you're anxious, chilly, 
if yes. you're restless, if you feel like death is imminent and you're, we actually had a case on shift where she was so anxious, she would lose her vision. She would go blind during panic attacks. So it's really good for just sheer terror and panic. Terror. Do you, do you have any other faves? Yeah, I actually just had a, I see a lot of arsenicum patients mm -hmm. in my practice. And I, um, do you want me to share about, I don't know if you want me to share. Yes. About we're talking about it. So I have this patient. I've been working with her for a couple of years. She was afraid of everything I was going to give her. Everything I gave her, well, what is this that you're giving me? Is this safe? And then the Googling and the, you know, I'm going to poison her type of mentality. And I had to, you know, assure her many times that, you know, I'm not poisoning her. I'm trying to help her. <laughs> but sometimes that, that fear is so deep that you can't rationalize with them because they're just so worried about, you know, being either incurable or no one can help me or that this is going to actually poison me. And she told me about a few months ago that she wakes up at night and worries about her health so deeply that she would like clench her throat like, oh my God, I'm not swallowing. I, oh my God, what happens if I can't swallow? What's going to happen to me now? And she would she would almost feel like no one would be able to help her and then she would have this looping of what if I can't swallow and now I can't swallow and now I can't breathe and I it sounded arsenicum to me and I don't like you so Dr. Kane has she I call her a homeopathic wizard so she not only has been doing this for many years but she has fancy software that helps her too and find the remedy <laughs> but I'm like kind of like the kind of just let, like listen to them and how it feels to me because like I said I created these characters in school of these people that fit that mold and um, basically I asked her then I said okay because there are certain keynotes of the remedies that you can do to actually confirm and I asked her okay what's your temperature and she said I'm do you lean more hot or do you lean more you know chilly she said I'm more chilly and then I asked her these questions that they kind of think you're nuts like oh <laughs> you, you know sips of water or drink of water are you guzzling it or are you sipping it and she would say she would sip it and that's a very arsenicum symptom and then when i looked up the time frame that anxiety can drive them out of bed um it's usually between i think it was like two to what is it two yeah 12 to two where that's when she would kind of wake up out of bed so i was like okay we're gonna give her some arsenicum and the <laughs> you put lizard um <laughs> yeah, i know i see that ace makeup <laughs> nice <laughs> um, so at that point I said, okay, and then she's extremely sensitive and I'm the most sensitive human. So I'm really good at dealing with sensitive patients. And just like you taught me, you can give another reason why I love homeopathy. You can give any type of administration from putting the pellet right into your mouth to, um, water dosing, or I know, <laughs> Uh, Nicole taught me, you know, you can literally even put the remedy in your bra or in your pocket because some people are literally that sensitive. And so I told her to do water dosing because I was very scared of what would happen. And I taught her what can happen sometimes is some people, they can have a little bit of an aggravation temporarily. So I tried to tell her if you start to aggravate or feel a little worse, it's just temporary because I didn't want her to freak out. And so after the first check-in, she said that, because um, arsenicum also helps with digestion. She said her digestion was better. Her anxiety was maybe 50% better, but she was not consistent and she was water dosing maybe every few days. So I said, let's try a pellet every day for the next 30 days. And then this is what she told me. She sent me a message. Great news. I've been taking arsenicum 30C now for 30 days consistently, like you said, and I have not, I have had not one day or night of anxiety since. I'm so happy and relieved we got this under control. I'm so grateful for you. So we have this oh. woman who was waking up out of bed thinking she was going to die and she couldn't swallow. And then, I mean, and she has a child, right? She can't be operating like this and anxious all day. And so that was one of my... Um, favorite recent stories and then just last really quick the same remedy arsenicum that helped that person also helped my patient with food poisoning because arsenicum can help with food poisoning so another patient I gave wrote me wow I'm so much better from the arsenicum I drink that in coconut water and I am tons better 
So you can use these remedies acutely. You can use these remedies for chronic. And that's why I love it. And, and if you have it in your house, it's great because, God forbid, you go eat that bad sushi. You can go grab your arsenicum. But then it also can help someone who has anxiety. So those are the two arsenicum success stories that I've had. Those are amazing. And I'm like, my heart is so full <laughs> hearing this. Because just imagine what life you've given these people and the, the one who's a parent, like their child is, wow, that just moves me so much, Susan. That's just so that's cool. Life back, right? You know, yeah. they get their life back. And from when people call sugar pellets, but you know, we, yeah. people say they don't work. And I'm like, you know, if, if you, a lot of people also don't think they work because they're going to the store and picking up some things maybe themselves. And while they have that nice little, you know, oh, for cough, that might not be your cough, right? It, and it may not work. And then some, some people just may not think it works, mm -hmm. right? Or practitioner, maybe we, we missed the ball on the remedy. But at least they have the other things you've given them that can help while we find their right remedy. And it has to be really right. And it's kind of what you're saying is it's prescribed on a system of like cures like. And so here's an example is if, if you imagine, as you're listening to this, imagine that you have a friend that comes up to you and they're talking a mile a minute and they're really excited and they're really hyper and they're rushing all around, you might think, hmm, have you had a little bit of extra coffee today? Yeah. <laughs> and so we all know what too much caffeine looks like. Mm -hmm. But let's say that they didn't actually have any caffeine and perhaps they have symptoms of bipolar disorder they could actually be in a manic episode. And so a manic episode can look where they're really energized, could be irritable or anxious or excitable, but it's a very hyper simulated state. And so that person that looks like they've overdosed in coffee may actually have an imbalance where it looks like that. And so if you give them homeopathic coffee that matches the symptoms, it will work. But if it isn't right, nothing will happen. And that's, again, what you're saying, Dr. Sue, about how it's great. Because if you give them the wrong remedy, nothing happens. Versus if I give you the wrong pharmaceutical, the wrong prescription, it could be really dangerous for your damaging. Um, Absolutely. Did they not hear us? Someone said no volumes. Yeah. Yeah, Jared, you're on. Jared, can you hear our volume? Is that okay? I see Jared making comments. Yeah, so just. Oh, okay. Ping us if anyone else can't hear us. Yep, healthy together, Coffee Cruda. You're totally right. Yep, Jared says he can hear us. So hopefully, okay. hopefully the sound is good. And so you gave us this great, these two great cases of our Senecum album. And I want to give us a couple of other remedy examples. And mm -hmm. so, do you have another story that comes to mind or another remedy that you like to use? Let's see. Oh, um, I remember. Oh, this was a, this was a while ago, but it was really, I remember it stuck out in my mind, um, like stage fright or feeling that they are like that imposter syndrome that they call it, or, um, feeling that they almost feel like they're not good enough. I remember there was a man, I think, it, I don't know if it was on your shift. There was a male and he just didn't feel confident. Um, I believe he had libido type issues or erectile issues. And then he, and he, he couldn't like every time he would have to go to a meeting or something, he would like, I mean, he would feel like something came over him where he just felt like worthless. And I remember we gave him like a podium, right? With that. And then um, yep. he, it's like almost like his confidence lifted. Um, and then the same with um, Orem. There was another patient I remember who was a male, another male who in Orem, and correct me if I'm wrong, Orem had this feeling like they, how do I put this, like they have this pressure to, to be a certain person to their wife or their, for a worker, right? They have this like deep sense of responsibility and this patient was extremely depressed and once we put him on Orem, I mean, it was like night and day in terms of that feeling. It was like almost like he was so depressed, but he had this feeling where he had to take over so many things, right? Am I explaining the remedy right? Like, how do I put this into words? 
Yeah, Orem can be so good for depression and anxiety, but especially depression with, like you said, Sue, like that sense of responsibility, that sense of pressure. Um, Orem can produce extreme amounts of guiltiness and self-hatred and grief. A lot of times people will feel Orem grief in their chest, like an elephant is sitting in your chest or like a heartache. And absolutely, and then you said like a podium and someone commented our gentum nitricum I like a podium and Argento Nitricum are very similar remedies. They both can cover anticipatory anxiety. So if you get anxious before speaking engagement or before a flight or before doing an Instagram live or whatever it is, both of those remedies cover that. And what can help you differentiate between like, in my experience, like, like a podium anxiety or is it Argento Nitricum anxiety is the physical sensations can help. And so Sue, you were talking about how this person had high sexual desire, but erectile dysfunction. It's very like a podium -y. And Argentum Nitricum can produce anxiety where there's this um, intense amount of anxiety with diarrhea, where it's, it, Gelsemium covers that too. And so it looks like Sue just bopped up. We're gonna get her back on, but absolutely. So Sue, you were describing like a podium and orum perfectly and then also that comment on Argentum, like that's another really good one. Welcome back. Sorry, Sorry about yeah, I don't know what happened. You were there and then you were gone. So. <laughs> so. I was I was just telling people just a little bit more about the two remedies that you brought up, the like a podium Argentum and, 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 and Argentum. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. There was Those are I wanted to ask you. There was something I wrote down. Oh, you know what else I love? If we don't have a diagnosis. Ooh, yes. Yes. If, if you don't, if what if we don't know? I remember our beloved mentor, Dr. Sensening. May he rest in peace. We love him. I would try not to cry, but he, I remember, he had some new students join, you know, to shadow him. And I remember him telling me a story. He was like, "Yeah, this patient came in and they had a rash, and the student was like, oh, we should go send it out for a culture,' and he was like." but it's a Restox rash. It's just give a Restox. And the student was like, oh no, but we have to find out the diagnosis first. And he's like, no, we don't. It's a Restox rash um, because that's a vitalist who's, you know, of course, obviously naturopaths, we're gonna do proper diagnostic testing and laboratory work and imaging when necessary. But if there's a little rash on someone, it may not, you know, necessitate them to go to their dermatologist to have them look at it if it's not that serious and so sometimes when we just don't know right what exactly is going on we just can give a remedy because there's a lot of times where there's a compilation of symptoms but there's really nothing that we can really you know differentiate and say this is what's going on so that's what i love it too it's kind of how chinese medicine is as well when you don't have a diagnosis but you can oh based on these symptoms we can allude to this remedy or, or, you know, this herb. Yeah. And we call these idiopathic diagnoses, right? Like they, we're idiots. We can't figure yeah. out what it is. And you know what, if, if you've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue or irritable bowel syndrome, oftentimes these are diagnoses where we just don't know why you feel the way you feel, but a diagnosis can only take us so far is what we know as vitalists is that your body is producing symptoms to try to tell you that something's out of balance. And in homeopathy, the way those symptoms are explained will very specifically tell us exactly how the body needs to be healed. And that's, that's that like cures like thing that we were just talking about. And so I think you raise a really important point is even if you don't have an exact diagnosis, if you've just been like ace makeup says, if you've just been given a general label exactly. that you can get a very specific treatment that can get you very good results. And I think that's really gives a lot of hope. Right. And like, you can travel well with it. It's like, you know, and it's cheap, right? Yeah. You know, like eight bucks. Right. Eight bucks. Right. So if you have the wrong remedy, if we choose the wrong remedy or you chose the wrong remedy, you just build up your natural dispensary and you'll likely be able to use that for something acutely or, or chronically in the future, you know? So it's not like those, you know, supplements that are $40, $50 and you're like, oh, if I don't mm -hmm. react well to this, now it's $40, $50 in the drain, but it's cheap and they, they taste good, right? So people who 
especially for infants or you, know, you put them in their bottle or, you know, water, right? It tastes like sugar. I'm trying to think of all the things that, why we love this. Um, yeah, you can travel, you can put it anywhere in your bag. What else? Um, it works synergistically with other uh, vitamins, minerals. So it's not like you have to only pick a remedy, <laughs> yep. and get, you know, and not take the other stuff too. What else am I missing here? Oh, and then do you want to talk about what a homeopathic aggravation and why? Because I always say it's like when people, when patients aggravate, I almost say, I don't know if you gave me this analogy or I made this up. So you tell me. I usually say it's like when you're spring cleaning and you empty out all your closet instead of one item at a time. It's almost like you just pick up all your stuff and then you take the remedy and you just feel worse for a couple of days or your current symptoms aggravate. And then is there something that you do to, beside explaining it to the patient so that they have trust that you're not worsening them or poisoning them because <laughs> they might aggravate, you know? Right, yeah. The difference is a therapeutic aggravation versus just a negative aggravation. And so if, for example, let's say someone has Lyme and you give them something to kill the Lyme, a lot of people will hurt. And so that's an aggravation. It's a sign that the Lyme is being killed and there's a lot of toxins being released. And so it can be really unpleasant, but oftentimes it does indicate that you're on the right track. And so the, the way to know if it's a therapeutic aggravation versus an aggravation, aggravation where you're just worse, where you maybe took a medication and you just are having horrible side effects or you just feel like garbage is one thing is that it unpacks things that are already there as opposed to causing a new disease. And so maybe we were talking about a rash earlier. So someone comes to see me and when they were a kid, they had a bright red rash and then they used cortisone cream, suppressed yep. the rash, they got asthma, they used cortisone inhaler and an albuterol inhaler, suppressed that, and then they get eye irritable bowel disease, and then they get anxiety and depression because their microflora is out of balance. They come to see you or me for their anxiety and depression, and we treat them with a vitalistic treatment, including a homeopathic remedy, let's say like a podium in this case, and then suddenly they get a bright red rash. They're mm -hmm. like, I feel kind of emotionally pretty okay, but this rash totally sucks. And it's on my face, by the way, that like, mm -hmm. thanks a lot, Dr. Kane. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is we want to stop the remedy. And it's kind of like you clean that part of your closet, you have a giant mess, let's just take a pause. Don't pull anything out. Don't take any more of the remedy and just let your body kind of remove that, detoxify that, clear that. And then you should feel even better than you did before. So an aggravation aggravation is just if it's not the right treatment or it isn't working. A therapeutic aggravation is you're on the right track. It just can be kind of hard. Yeah. Another easy example of that is if you go to therapy and you start talking about a past memory that was really hard is sometimes mm -hmm. just you've got to get it out and it's painful, but it's a part of the healing process. So that is the really good point is could I feel worse and what does that mean? Yeah. And how many percentage of your, like, would you say of your patients actually have homeopathic aggravations? You know, when I was a baby homeopath, it really rarely happened. And then the more, the longer I was in practice, it happened way more. So it was probably 10% in the beginning of practice. And then now it's probably like 70%. Why do you think that? Because you're picking better remedies? I think it's because I'm picking better remedies. I think that, so when we think of like, will I react to this remedy? It, yeah. We've seen in the research that it's bell gray's curve, that in the middle of the curve, you have the most potencies, the, the remedy. And so you can go higher and higher and higher in potency and the person will still react because it's right in the middle of that curve and it works versus some people, like I have a patient right now on my caseload, she'll react to anything I give her, even if it's not quite right. And so she just kind of has like a meh reaction. It's kind of like, well, my body will do something, but nothing much. But then when we really get her that slam dunk, it evokes a really powerful response, which can then pull more stuff out. But that's really just me theorizing. Maybe, yeah. maybe it's just the patient population or we're just also really toxic and stressed right now. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. What about water dosing? How many water dose do you normally do? Do you water dose a lot initially? Yeah. yeah, what I do is I always do two pellets one time and then wait three days. And 
So that's kind of like opening up the closet doors, letting stuff come out. And if like nothing really happens, then they, they'll probably be fine after three days doing daily dosing. But with that first dose, if they pull a bunch of stuff out of the closet and they feel like I have more anxiety or my sleep sucked or I have a rash, if anything's mm -hmm. worse, then we're going to be water dosing because it's obviously your body's having a really big response. Okay, so you're saying that you'll do two pellets straight into their mouth and wait three mm -hmm. days. And then if they have a violent kind of reaction, like aggravation, then mm -hmm. maybe water dose from there, not necessarily start. But you can also, that, it's also okay to water dose initially too. Right? Yeah. If I'm someone who's like, I react to everything, then I'll be like, maybe we should water <laughs> well, dose you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get, yeah, they get very upset then. And we don't want them <laughs> feeling like that, that yeah. either, right? And then right. that's like you can, you can, I mean, there's, you're not only, people will say to me, oh, well, what can I do for these physical symptoms? And they're not realizing that you can help both physical and mental. You, you're literally helping the entire psyche and you're also helping your physical. And that's what a lot of people don't, they, they think, oh, I have to take something for my anxiety and then I have to take something for my physical. But if we find the right remedy, we're going to help with, let's say, their depression or anxiety, but then also maybe their migraines or their rashes, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that's because the body goes out of tune. And so kind of think of it like riding a bicycle. So if you're riding your bicycle and you tip, you're learning to ride it. You don't know how to ride. So you tip a little bit. It's not like just your pinky toe tips or right. your, your hair tips, right? Your whole person tips. And mm -hmm. so what, what you're doing with the remedy is you're capturing that snapshot of what that whole person, mind, body, spirit looks like when they're out of balance and catch them before they fall over by giving the right remedy, which is like correcting them on the bicycle. Mm -hmm. And so it's part of the healing process. When you ride a bike and you start tipping back and forth, you learn every single time. And eventually you don't tip, you just ride your bike. And that's the goal of homeopathy is that maybe you tend towards anxiety and diarrhea. And so when you tip, we correct that imbalance by giving you the dose, your body's like, oh, I know what to do. You feel better. The next time you tip, maybe it's a little less, we correct it. You feel better until you no longer need a remedy any longer. Love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Did we get questions? I don't know. I don't know. What yeah. Have to go. Do we look to yeah. See? Let's just spend just two more minutes. And so are there any questions that come up? um that you thought about so somebody live you wrote has any any athletes or patients with vocal cord dysfunction i've actually treated vocal cord dysfunction and so just think of the vocal cords as just another piece of data in when the body's out of balance um in particular i've had great success with using ignatia in vocal cord <laughs> dysfunction yeah really yeah. what mm -hmm. about phosphorus or have you did phosphorus or causticum also have that? Causticum, yeah. Bill Clinton probably needed causticum. <laughs> yep. So, yep, causticum's really good. Lachesis is also really good. Oh. So this is another thing to keep in mind, is that we're not treating the symptoms. Yeah. We're treating the, the whole person that's out of balance. And so, you know, like Sue said, so we're not going to give like a remedy for the migraines and then a remedy for the diarrhea and then a remedy mm -hmm. for the fibromyalgias. We're going to try to find something that helps stimulate your body to self-correct. Right. So it's not like a game of whack-a-mole, which is really different from yep. traditional medical model, which is like you take this drug for that and that drug for that and this drug for the side effects of those two. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there awesome. any other questions that came up? I had answered for you. I'm assuming you're saving it, but I said you're saving it. The live, the Instagram live. Oh, yes. Saving yep. What, it, so I, I said, yep. Yeah. What will happen is if Instagram behaves properly, it will let me download the video. If it doesn't, we'll just screen record it. So yeah, this will be saved. Okay. And then yeah. last questions. What do you recommend for anxiety? That's a loaded question, but if you want to answer that in a Yep. So with anxiety, you want to do a couple things. One is you want to identify the root causes of anxiety. And so do a really good detailed write up of your history. I call this your biography. Mm -hmm. And so the why will tell us the how. And so we want to know why you have anxiety. What is your body trying to tell you? Is it a psychological cast of characters? Is it that 
you have trauma or that you have parts of yourselves that feel anxious to protect you? Or is it just social cast of characters? Is it people in your environment, the government, society, your colleagues, your friends? Could those people be aggravating your anxiety? Or could it be a biological cast of character? Could it be thyroid or gut health or medications that you're taking? So for managing anxiety first is you have to do the why. And then there are so many tools that mm -hmm. can help. You know, your today we're talking about homeopathy. Your right, your course. Yeah, I have amazing. a whole course. Thank you. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, I <laughs> no, it's amazing. Guys. I watched it. It's incredible. She tells you, like, step by step what to do. I had to interrupt you to, like, remind you about your course. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm like, oh, you have a course. <laughs> by the way, this is, yeah, if you have anxiety, take the course. It's, yeah. it's a decade plus <laughs> of work put into a course that's, that tells you exactly what to do. Tells you there's algorithms for testing. There's recipes for botanical tinctures. There's homeopathic algorithms. It's all there for you. There's videos. There's a beautiful book. Like it's wonderful. Or you could go see Sue for one on one. Oh yeah. All, and, oh my goodness. We have one on one. We have the course. We have obviously finding a remedy. There's all these supplements that she suggests that can really help. But again, we have to find the cause. And mm -hmm. someone else asked, what about um, chronic hip pain? Someone mm -hmm. asked about cartilage inflammation. So we can yes. find remedies that obviously target hip pain, inflammation, and in wherever they're referring to cartilage inflammation, Meniere's disease. That's mm -hmm. also, there's, but I think what people have to remember is that there's not, yes, there are some remedies that you think of a keynote, but we need to know your whole person to find the remedy for you because your Meniere's may be treated by X remedy and someone else's Meniere's may be treated by Y remedy. But yeah, you're, um, and then someone said, what is this? I came in late, just wanted to show love to Dr. Sue who helped my son with autism. Oh, Go Dr. Sue, uh -huh. yay. So nice. Thanks Thank for you. sharing that. It's so good to hear testimonials uh -huh. that this stuff works. And uh -huh. if you wanna work with Dr. Sue, make sure that you, if you haven't already, friend her, follow her on her Instagram. And then if you wanna take my course, if you could just find it in the link in the bio on my page. Yeah. So we could do more lives like this if this is interesting yeah, and fun for like, all y'all. So like question and answer because someone asked yeah. about sleep and yeah, we can do, um, she said, if, can we take a course? If so, when? Yeah, if you go to um, Dr. Nicole's page, she has a link to her course in there. And then yeah, we did hundreds of remedies for sleep. I know specifically, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Kane helped me. I, and I'll just end with this. Dr. Kane has, he, she, how do I even put this into words? When I was in a very bad crisis mentally, after learning about trauma, after being in the middle of Lyme disease, and I thought there was like nowhere up, she helped me significantly with sleep that was related to trauma and helping, you know, from, from the component of what do we do in terms of having to um, taper medications? What should we do in terms of medication while we actually heal you and figure out what's going on? So for that, I'm eternally grateful. So to answer about sleep, she has mm -hmm. helped me in the worst of my crises when I was an anxious disaster. And I'm sharing this because we're humans too, right? We, we deal with all the stuff that you guys deal with, right? And so I just want to remind you that we're all so human. We experience these things and she's helped me so significantly. So make sure you follow her. Thank you. I'm so honored. I love you, sister. It's such a joy to be on this journey with you. I respect you so much. So thank you.